What better way to kick off homework day than to talk with the creator of Wolfram Alpha himself, Stephen Wolfram. Hey, Stephen. Hi. Well, thank you so much for being here today and just for, for bringing us all here. I wanted to talk with you a little bit about the trajectory of Wolfram Alpha. So you launched in May, and since oh, then... A, it's a, it's a long-term project. It's okay? a long-term project. I'm, I'm a person who does long-term projects. You know, we've been working on Mathematica now for, I think, 23 years. Well, from Alpha, only for five years or so. And finally, we kind of uh, released it into the wild in May, five months ago. And uh, it's been exciting to see how people have been using it and uh, how its use has been growing. We learn a lot from seeing how people use Wolfram Alpha, and uh, that's what drives Wolfram Alpha to get better and so on. Mm -hmm. So in, in, since May, it's, it's grown and evolved steadily. And where does Homework Day fit into the current path that Wolfram Alpha is on? Well, so one of the things that we noticed quickly is that uh, people started discovering that Wolfram Alpha is really good for doing these educational kinds of things. Both students and educators discovered that. They discovered things we hadn't really even quite realized were important about Wolfram Alpha for, for education. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, well, that we're seeing all these different things happening. Let's try and have a, a definite event where we can sort of pull in people who have figured out all sorts of interesting things, made all sorts of interesting achievements with Orphan Alpha, let them interact, let us interact with them. Uh, we hope to learn a bunch from, uh, from them. Uh, maybe they'll learn some stuff from us. Yeah, that exchange, that, that discussion. You mentioned some intriguing, uh, interesting uses. What, in the past few months, what are some of the uh, interesting uses that have surprised you? You know, I think, I think the most significant thing is when you think about sort of homework, you sometimes think this is a very canned kind of thing. You know, you've got to be able to have a problem that you can solve in, uh, you know, in a matter of, I don't know, some number of minutes, whatever else. And, you know, if you have some problem that might be about the real world, you can't really make it about the real, real world. You have to make it about some simplified real world where they're just three numbers and they're in the problem and that's how you solve things. Yeah, right? a simplified that, model. Right, and it, and it kind of makes it, kind of takes a lot of the fun out of it. It's, it's uh, what people are now have realized you can do with Wolfram Alpha is you can, you can do the real, real world. You can actually say, you know, look at the actual uh, economic time series for such and such a thing. Look at the, uh, you know, actual properties of some, uh, some physics system or some, uh, uh, some, some, uh, some mathematical kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and with Wolfram Alpha, you get to kind of have a tool that lets you kind of uh, uh, do the real thing, just like, uh, uh, just like anybody in the world can do. You know, mm -hmm. one, one of the things I think is really fun about Wolfram Alpha is that it kind of it kind of squashes down the distance between what the the sort of the world expert can do and what the kid who's doing a homework problem can do. Yeah. I mean, we're now sort of we're all in the same boat now um, because you know we've got a, we've got a tool that lets lets us sort of get this kind of access to expert level computational knowledge, mm -hmm. um, but it's accessible to to anybody. Uh, not just to sort of the expert, so to speak. I remember when I was learning physics and they said, okay, well, here's the equation, but it doesn't work in the real world because you can't do this and you have to factor this out and all that. And I felt like, well, what am I going to use this for then if I can't use it in the real world? Right, right. So um, why, why did you call it homework day? Do you have a special relationship with, with homework that we should know about? I don't think so. <laughs> I, I, uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a long time since I've been doing homework myself. Actually, I, I realized I was thinking about it. I was thinking, what, what, is, what was my attitude towards homework and, and how does it relate to what we're doing here? I imagine it was a positive one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. I, I, actually, I had kind of a funny theory about homework, which was my theory was near any problem that was in the homework or in a book, there's another problem that has never been solved before and that I could have a lot more fun working on. Now, this is like, you know, different personalities are motivated in different ways. I happen to be sort of motivated by figuring out stuff that people haven't figured out before. Yeah. So that was kind of a good, uh, a good theory for me. Yeah. And, but one of the things I realized is, uh, I was just thinking back about this actually today, um, was when I was sort of doing homework and so on, one of my, probably my number one principle was always learn kind of the best tools to get the job done as efficiently as possible. So, you know, for me, that was in late 60s, early 1970s, when the tools that one learned were, you know, use a card catalog well in a library, learn <laughs> how to use microfiche well to, yeah. to look things up. And, and then when it came to things like math, learn these kind of power tool techniques mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, may be only uh, officially written down in some fancy graduate math textbook. But once you know these techniques, you can kind of take out the technique and you can just come and, and uh, you know, have this machine tool and just crush these little problems. 
very satisfying. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but when you've crushed the problem that was actually in the homework, mm -hmm. you can go look at a bunch of other problems that, uh, well, are kind of fun because you know, or you have a pretty good idea, nobody's actually worked on those problems Yeah, before. let's see what else I can do with, with the new tools that I've, the power tools that I've acquired. Right. So what you've done is you've really built a tool that you would have loved to have had when you were going through your educational process. Oh, for sure, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think, you know, at any given time, I, I kind of view sort of a lot of uh, progress of civilization has been as being sort of automating more and more levels of stuff. So, yeah. so we humans get to do the things we think we're best at, and we can sort of delegate other stuff to, to the machines or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, at, at every given stage, um, one's, uh, the more one can automate, um, the more one's able to go further. And, and now we have, with Wolfram Alpha, kind of a, a uh, I think, a, a decent jump in automating uh, a lot of kinds of uh, knowledge and, and uh, making a lot more knowledge computable in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what you've done with the massive data entry effort that was involved in making something like, like I mentioned earlier, a donut, you know, how many calories yes, are right. in a donut, making that computable so that you right. can actually punch it in. Yeah, so there's about 10 trillion pieces of data now in, in Wolfram wow. Alpha. And uh, it's kind of, uh, at every, every second, and there's more flowing in, whether it's uh, weather data or financial data or data about uh, all kinds of different things in, in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so Wolfram Alpha is kind of gradually accumulating uh, more and more. Um, and, uh, you know, every one of the things we've been proud of is that uh, since the system first went live, mm -hmm. um, we've been actually updating the, the major, the main code base for the system every single week. So it's now um, every week. how many twenty something? Now we'd have to ask Wolfram Alpha how many weeks it is. But uh, <laughs> so every um, week you get a new, a brand new Wolfram Alpha, basically. Yes, yes. Wow. Um, usually goes live on Tuesdays. Uh, on Tuesdays. Okay. But it, it's uh, it. it uh, but the the um, the kind of the the thing that we're doing is we're we're sort of. Uh, one of the key things is that we're now able to see hundreds of millions of actual queries that people make. Um, and so we're able to kind of adapt uh, Wolfram Alpha to the way that people express themselves when they're typing into its input field. Because, mm -hmm. you know, one of the big challenges is we've got uh, a system that has all these algorithms, all this data, can compute all these kinds of things, generate all these visualizations, all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But the real question is, what does a person who's using it, what do they actually want to do? Exactly. Um, and uh, so, you know, they express themselves in, well, it isn't really in English, it isn't really in their native language at all, it's in some kind of funny sort of calculese language <laughs> that uh, is kind of, uh, you know, has all sorts of abbreviations and shortenings and things, mm -hmm. and it's, it's there in the input field. And now our challenge is, you know, can we, can we learn this language? You know, what, one of the things I've noticed is that uh, uh, in the time since Wolfram Alpha went live, mm -hmm. we've, we've seen a large number of kind of pieces of input like that. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering to myself, you know, if we compare a child learning a language, um, you know, how many, how many sentences do they hear yeah. when they get to learn learn the language that... Uh, and, what's, and what's the grammar? You yeah, know, right, right. How Basically, so you're learning how to, to listen to the people that are using Wolfram Alpha. Well, my last question is, what was the last uh, one or two things that you used Wolfram Alpha for just in your, in your daily life? Well, let's see. I'm sure I've used it today. What have I used it today? <laughs> Probably some date computations and maybe some things about uh, web traffic and trying to figure out uh, what might happen today and whether whether all will be well with our supercomputer servers and things like that um, mm -hmm. uh, to make this uh, to drive what we're doing um, uh, here today. So business as usual. Uh, I right. think so. <laughs> Stephen, thank you so much, and, and thank you for creating something that we can spend a whole day with.